In the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. And welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program. Known here on social media, wherever you may find me. I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Number Seven. I am your soul brother number one, number one, and your friend, Talik Even Ra. Uh, well, how do we start this off? When I was a child, I was bullied. And uh, because of that experience of being bullied, not for one day, not for two months, not for two years, but for a pretty long time, that experience of being bullied has caused me mental problems. I knew it. I knew that dude was crazy. I told you. <laughs> I told you. No, not crazy, insane like that. But anyone who has been bullied, abused, exploited, they can tell you from their experience where I'm coming from. It messes, it disturbs your mind. However, as I become older and look back at that experience, I learn from that experience. And what was once a negative, I have made positive. Because what I learned through that experience is that my bully was not as strong as I thought my bully was. What kept me or what really caused me to suffer for all these years was fear. The fear of getting hurt. The fear of getting my lip busted and blood going everywhere and bruises. I don't know why I feared that because I would get a, a spanking from my parents and I experienced my lip getting busted and, 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 and bruises and sores. The bully couldn't do too much worse than a whipping from my father. So I don't know what I was scared of. And I was a tough little guy. We didn't. We didn't go to hospitals. My family, we we don't go to hospitals. I remember when uh, I had cut uh, my my uh, my knee, and I cut my knee on a piece of glass. You could see the bone. My mother grabbed my knee and some alcohol, not hot, not was not peroxide, alcohol. Threw it on there. I almost wanted to pass out. It hurt so bad. She grabbed, not no, not no bandages, just some rags, some tore up clothes, wrapped it around my leg. You go to school. <laughs> wow. You know, so I don't know nothing about hospitals and, you know, pain threshold is pretty high. It had to be, be high in order to, su to survive that type of me medical care. So one of my problems that I had with the bully Number one was fear. And another problem that I had was since I was raised around all these females, and there were males around me, but, <laughs> you know, I, this two-parent household thing that y'all talking about, the uncles and all, these, all this manhood, I was surrounded by grandfather, uncles, cousins. All these men was not interested in interaction with boys. They didn't want to take me fishing. They didn't want to they didn't want to teach me to box. Matter of fact, I don't even know if they knew how to box. So everything that I began to learn, I had to learn on my own. I had to, it was self-taught. I had to learn everything on my own. So the only way I knew how to fight was Spider-Man and Batman, and you know how those cartoon characters fight. And 
I tried to do that and it don't work. <laughs> it, don't, it don't work. Matter of fact, you get you get laughed at because people people look at you like, what is he trying to do? That that's not boxing. He's trying to fight like Captain America. They don't, you know, like you see in the comic books. <laughs> it's, it's very sad. This is a problem that the so-called Negro, the descendants of slaves, born in America, having dark skin. The African American is the color, the Negro, whatever you want to call yourself, the black, whatever you want to call yourself. This is the problem that we have among us as a group of people, so-called people. We have not become a people yet. We are, we have similar circumstances divided in groups. If we became a people, woo! If we became a people, unstoppable. But we, re we refuse to do that because the leadership wants slaves. I ain't going to give you my slaves. These my, these my slaves. These my Hebrew Israelites. These my Christians. These my Muslims. These my, my. <laughs> you, you need to question your leadership. When your leadership is not working for the unification of all of us in similar circumstance, all of us who once lived up under a label we call soul, then you need to you need to really wonder. But the descendants of slaves, the people of soul, going on 500 years, we complain about a condition. And the reason why we are still in that condition is because <laughs> of fear. We are, we, I don't care what you say out of your mouth. I don't, you is, of, you is afraid of the white man. There's no doubt about that. And you can't fight. And the white man or the pink Caucasian racist is the bully in our lives. Just like I had a bully in my personal life, we have a bully going on 500 years in our, in our lives as a people. And this bully, we are scared of this bully. We don't know how to fight this demon. 500 years. You our people, our ancestors have died and bled on our side. On his side, how many have died and bled? Very few. If I'm not going to say none, but very, very few. We have a graveyard. A big graveyard. They don't even have to cry about it. We don't know how to fight this demon. But yet we know how we know how to play basketball. We don't know how to strategize. We don't. Oh, how can I put this? We are always on the offensive. I mean, we are always on the defense. They are always on the offense. We never, even though all of us read all these books. People keep telling me, brother, you need to read a book. You need to read a book. History, reading a book is like in a, in, a, in a game of sport, you take a videotape and you rewind and you review. So you can see what you've done wrong so you can do better against the other team. You play, you rewind the tape so you can see what this other team is doing so that you can counter what that team is doing to put yourself on the offensive instead of always being on the defense. But we refuse to change our strategy. We are not open to new ideas. One of your problems, one of, uh, of our problems is we continue to play the race game with the people that created race. You don't have no token. You don't know the rules of the game. And there you are playing. You've been, you've been playing the race game, let's just say, starting with Marcus Garvey, 
all the way till today. And how many games have you won? You have not won nothing. You get a, a, a award for running your mouth. Y'all talk like you won a game, but you ain't won nothing. You've only reacted to what somebody do to you. You never caused them reaction. When they do something to you, they already know what you're going to do. March, protest, let's vote, open a black business. The same old, same old. Not even a different kind of way. The exact same way that you always been doing it since the time of Marcus Garvey, since the time of Dr. King, since the time of uh, 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 whatever. You're doing the same old exact thing. Here you are, a new life with your own brain, and you can't think for yourself. You got to go way back to Marcus Garvey, who is deceased, way back to Malcolm, Harriet Tubman, Nat Turner. You <laughs> are alive and can't think. You are dependent on dead folks to help the living. You are not open to new ideas, new strategy, new thoughts or anything. So you will continue to be a loser. We have become insane. And insane, I mean, we still are doing what they done years ago and expecting to win. You are expecting a different result. That is. That is insanity. What I learned in my experience is that dealing with my bully, I had to do something different. And the first thing, one of the first things I had to do was stop fearing him. Y'all scared of this guy. We don't have nuclear bombs. We don't have AK-47. We don't have this. We don't have that. Get over your fear. I don't give a damn what he has. You need to get over your fear. But you can't get over your fear. Because you want to live to a ripe old age and watch it and watch it, your grandchildren grow up. And that's your problem. You're selfish. Dr. King said in one of his last speech, like any man, I would like to live a long life. But he knew doing what he was doing, that's not that might not be possible. Dr. King wanted to live a long life. Brother and Minister Malcolm X wanted to live a long life. Who don't? But somebody has to stand up. Somebody has to end this for our children, for our future, once and for all. Somebody who will not fear. Y'all a bunch of sissies. You're pathetic. I don't care. See, that's why you don't mess with me. Because I know exactly what you are. You're cowards. Men and women. Matter of fact, a sister told me she was scared. So at least admit, I am scared. You want to put on this tough role when it's quite obvious and it's quite clear you are afraid. If you change your strategy from defense to offense, but see, in order to change your strategy, your enemy might react in a very hostile manner, and that's what you're scared of. Look, we are going to die. And I don't care if you die getting shot one time or you get shot 100 times. Death is death. So what? If I love my wife, if I love my children, if I love the people that I am born from, if you want our people to live without this fear, without this mental disturbance that we've suffered going on 500 years, somebody has to stand up. Somebody has to get off the defense and the crying. Please, sir, stop doing it. Give us our right. It's quite clear it's not going to happen. You got to stand up for yourself. Be a man. Be a woman. I can't do it by myself. Because they know bro going to stand for his. I am proven. They know I'm going to stand for mine. But you, mm, you won't do it. You won't stand.
That's a shame. And you wonder why the children and women don't look up to the men and the children don't look look to their adults. Mm. Jot down your comment. Let's let's talk about this. 